Hello there, this is Psyche. Today we're gonna do something I thought I'd never do again. Since we're at the spooky season, I thought I'd showcase a weapon that shared a similar theme with Halloween. We're talking about the tombstone. So this video is definitely gonna be a bit of a return to form for a lot of you guys that have been watching this channel for a while. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think I'd ever do an item showcase again, but one thing that did change in the last two updates made me consider otherwise, and that was the Legendary Rework. So in this video, I'm gonna be trying to get the Legendary variant of the Tombstone, and then showcase that, because as you know, some of these Legendary items have a unique affix that is individual to them and no other weapon. So if you get a certain Legendary item, it's definitely worth checking out what it actually does. And with the help of a brand new mutation that was introduced in the last patch, we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna find a legendary spike shield in the toxic sewers, and of course I'm gonna take that. How can you not take a legendary spike shield? I believe the shield does bonus damage to parried enemies, so in this case, anything that gets parried by spike shield is as good as dead. So I'm generally gonna speed up the footage of the early game biomes, since I don't think there's anything too much to show. And let's be real here, the legendary variant of Tombstone is what we're all waiting for. I have been considering making some boss rush content, uh, maybe just to showcase a couple runs here and there, but I currently don't find boss rush to be that enticing of a game mode. The only reason I would do it is to unlock the different outfits. Because speaking of which, I'm using one of the outfits right now, but the thing with the boss rush outfits is that a lot of them are locked behind flawless achievements. So you actually have to flawless the different boss rush challenges at different boss cell levels, which is a lot to ask for. Maybe I'll do them one day, but for now, I don't think so. The outfits are mainly there for a bit of flex that you actually did the challenges. But speaking of new content, I have heard that Dead Cells is going to be getting some more updates pretty soon. We can probably expect a brand new paid DLC sometimes next year, and I'm honestly interested what it could be. I'm thinking something that could replace the prisoners' quarters. It'll be nice to have a starting area that's not, you know, the same every single run. Though we can probably expect yet another free update in the winter, as suggested by the roadmap. Now, something I really wanted to try out was to see all of the legendary variants of every single weapon in the game. There are some I really want to see. For example, I know that the legendary flint has an affix that just instantly charges up the flint for you, so you don't actually have to hold down the button to do it. That could potentially be a game changer. But for now, my goal is to just survive with what I have, survive until the mid game, and then get a legendary tombstone. And while we're here, I just want to remind everyone that I am doing fine in real life. I just haven't been uploading much because I do have a graduate program to worry about. Unfortunately, I do believe I've mentioned this before, but YouTube is not going to be a full-time thing for me. Unless something really unexpected happens. Currently, I'm waiting on other roguelikes to come out and wait for a big boom of a game that everyone jumps onto. I know I kind of missed the Hades train when that was a thing, but I did play Hades a pretty good bit and thoroughly enjoyed it, though it's probably too late to jump on that wagon now. So essentially, I'm almost waiting on the next Hades to come out. One game that I have been anticipating is the new, um, is the new game made by Mihoyo, which was called like Zenless Zone Zero or something. Essentially, they're the same creator as Genshin Impact, which you can have whatever perception you want on the game. But that is something I am looking forward to because I do believe they mentioned that it will have roguelike elements. Though, knowing me, Hoyo, they're probably gonna do something about a live service. I mean, come on, why wouldn't you, right? I definitely think a live service roguelike could work, though it really depends on how it's implemented. In fact, I have been writing a script on this exact topic as a video essay. So, the question is, can live service roguelikes actually be good? Of course, I do want to emphasize that live service is not the same as pay to win. Obviously, pay to win is a very big concern in every single game because it's not really about your skill, it's about how much cash you throw at the game. I've also watched in a seminar once that, that skill-based games often make less money if it is live service. 
so that really gives you something to think about. Gaming truly is in a weird spot right now. I really don't know how to think about that. Speaking about this fight, I did lose the no hit to some tentacles. Um, you probably shouldn't use the crusher on the tentacle phase. That's a lesson I'm learning the hard way right now because it disrupts the movement and you'll probably get hit because you don't know when it's actually coming at you. But once we trap Conjunctivius, we're able to make pretty sure work of this giant eyeball. Of course, my strategy for this is to just wait until she gets caught by the traps and then just swing away with the tombstone. Um, you can't activate the gimmick with tombstone in this fight unless you happen to do it on the tentacles, of course. But in bosses, I don't think the third hit can actually land tombstones on anything. That being said, I do believe the third hit actually does more damage than usual. And I think a way they've been solving the boss cap damage problem is to just make heavier weapons hit more than once, like the case with the Wrecking Ball. So we're gonna pick up the brand new mutation Wish in the mutation reset, and we're just gonna go and try to get a legendary variant of the Tombstone. Of course, this is a little RNG based because I didn't lock out every other survival weapon except for the Tombstone. And the other thing is that you have to remind yourself that you can't pick up any other item until you get the legendary you want because it only works for the first time so you really need to make it count and the wish mutation will permanently lock out one of your mutation slots once it is used so you really have to make it count unfortunately in a brief footage you saw there i did not get the tombstone in the shop but that's okay we got another chance at it in the next biome I do think the Wish Mutation is a fantastic addition to the game, assuming that you actually get the legendary that you want. Otherwise, it's not really that good because it only works once, and not all legendary items are busted. But I'm gonna show some footage of the Tombstone in action. Unfortunately, due to the nature of how the gimmick works, you have to land and kill the enemy on the third hit, you can't damage it, you can't leave it at one health, you can't use skills to uh, finish the job for you, you have to land the last hit and then finish off the enemy with that attack. It's a very specific gimmick, but it's also really powerful if you do manage to do it. Um, once we get to the next biome, I'll state some of the things I notice with this kind of gimmick and why this last hit in the combo kind of mechanic shouldn't really be normalized in a lot of other Dead Cells weapons. But we're gonna just go nice and slow with this curse here, and in no time we're gonna lift it. Good thing we got those rats covering up for us. But essentially, because you're playing the tombstone for its effect, um, when it doesn't trigger, it might as well just be a beat stick. So finally, we're gonna get the legendary tombstone. And this is actually a legendary variant level 12, which is just not something you see every day. And here you'll see, the problem is not that I don't do too little damage, the problem is that I do too much damage. As you can see, a lot of the enemies are just dying in one or two hits, which makes it really hard to pull off the gimmick with the tombstone. Now, that being said, I'm not going to intentionally put myself in danger just so I can land the third hit. The times when I do actually manage to throw tombs on top of everyone, that's because I was already, like, doing the combo. So when you drop tombs, it's done unintentionally. It's still a nice surprise every now and then because the effect looks really cool. It basically one-shots every single enemy on screen, assuming that you do get to this stage of the game. And on top of that, because the legendary variant will repeat that effect for enemies that are even off screen, you often have a lot of these moments where it's just like this cascading effect of enemies dying and then just gold flying into you from off screen because everything else around that enemy has also died. Which is absolutely insanity, though unfortunately, since we are at the late game, we won't get to see this effect very often. Um, we're gonna go into the giant fight, and while we are at it, I'm going to discuss some of the issues I think late game content has on a roguelike. Now, when I'm fighting the giant, I can either go to the shipwreck, or I guess uh, the high peak castle or distillery, or I can get straight into Hand of the King. Now, when you're at the later stage of the game, especially when it's a roguelike, when your one hour long progress is on the line, you probably just want to win. While I understand that the Queen and the Servants are a really fun fight, in my opinion, they are a harder variant of the normal route, and you should only go there if your build is good for it, or you just have a really fast loadout. In this case, I don't. 
If you just want to win, all you have to do is finish the game. You don't really have to intentionally challenge a harder boss, because once I invested like 40 minutes into a run, I just want to win. I don't really care about variety at this point, I'm sure everybody values their time, and this is kind of a shortfall with the Queen and the Sea DLC is that the content that it brings is strictly endgame. And I also think this is the reason why any new players for Dead Cells should get the Dead Sea DLC first, because it brings variety into the early game levels, which is a much more appreciated addition to the game, assuming that you're just starting out. So that's my two piece on the debate about end game content. Obviously, I'm not saying that they shouldn't make end game content. I think it does have a place and a fan base for it. I certainly have been enjoying Queen of the Sea, and it has been a blast. And while we're on the subject of discussions, here's a hot take for you guys that have made it this far into the video. I don't think showing footage of the Astrolab is spoiler content, because if you're not aware, there's actually footage of this biome in the Rise of the Giant DLC trailer. If you go look at that trailer on YouTube, they actually show footage from the Astrolab. Now obviously, if you go ahead and say like what the Astrolab is in terms of the lore, that is potentially a spoiler, but I think if you just show footage of this biome without any context, then it shouldn't be considered spoiler content. So yeah, what do you think on this matter? But I'm probably complaining a bit too much about content that was originally free. So I'm gonna show some footage of the tombstone triggering, but we're gonna go into the tower area and then I'm probably just gonna go straight into the last boss. So before we wrap things up, what are some other legendary items you guys want to see showcased? It definitely changes up the whole perception of a lot of weapons in the game. Once you do get the legendary variant of certain weapons, your playstyle and perception of them will completely change. So one last food to top off my health, and we're off to finish off the run. I definitely prefer fighting the collector over the queen. It's just a lot more approachable because there's actually downtime where you get to attack versus the frantic and fast-paced nature of the queen. We're also gonna go through the ultimate test of just how powerful the tombstone is. Now, obviously Crusher is doing a lot of the work for me, just stun-locking the collector and making him not able to attack. We are able to get off a lot of damage, and even when he attacks, you have to remember we have the legendary spike shield we got all the way from the toxic sewers, and it is doing amazing work for us. So we're gonna get him off to two heals, and we're gonna do one last gimmick with the tombstone, and hammer him on from here. I'm honestly surprised about the power level of this giant piece of stone. We're in the final stretch of the fight now, and once again Crusher just stun locking him in place. What an MVP of a skill. Even the nerf it got can't touch him. And then of course I get a little greedy and get hit in the last second. But there we have it. This was a pretty easy run, and I certainly didn't have any difficulties with using the tombstone, but that could also just be because it was a legendary. But hopefully you enjoyed this old school type of video that I've always done in the last year, and thank you all for watching.